Hello, everyone. My name is Frank Anthony, and welcome back to Let Me Be Frank. This is episode 30, and today I have a very special guest. It's one of my friends from high school, Carly Danik. Hey, Carly, how's it going? Hi, Frank. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. And thank you for coming onto the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So a quick little disclaimer that I like to put at the beginning of episodes is that some things that are said, whether it's during the questions or during the frankly speaking segment later, are, you know, some things that are said might be opinion. So I also encourage everyone to go out and do their own research as well. So we're going to go right into the first segment, which is phone a friend. So Carly, tell us a little bit about yourself. A way I like to word that is if you were a novel, what would the back of your book say? Well, for the most part, I consider myself an average Joe. I uh, still live at home with my parents, but I do go to work every day. I do my best to contribute with life at home when I am not at work. Uh, Me and my parents have a pretty good relationship with each other. Um, They treat me more as a tenant than a daughter, so I do kind of have freedom to go here and there as I please. Um, My sister comes over often to visit with my niece, and so my family, I guess you would say, is very close. At work, I work at an injection molding plant, which um, is kind of an interesting little business. Typically, I work in the finishing department, but as of late, they've been having me out on the machines, which I don't find to be too hard, but it can be rather boring having to stand for a while just opening and closing a door all day but work is work yep <laughs> and your your sister was on she very quickly she was on the last episode of season two i did kind of like a i don't know if um you and her listened to it but there was an episode about favorite memories and um she was on that for a few minutes that segment your sister chrissy yeah, she she's a pretty awesome sister, even though uh, the two of us are 15 months apart and I am the oldest. She's always been more of the older sister to me, like in our roles together. She's always kind of taken charge and I've always been a little bit on the meeker side. But I think the two of us, we complement each other in a, our own ways and that, yeah, I mean, that's good for siblings. I grew, I grew up an only child, so I, I have half siblings that are like across the world. But it's, I mean, yeah, it's really, it's interesting to look at different siblings and see how different or how similar they are. So it's cool that you guys kind of have a little bit of the differences, but then you guys still come together with those similarities. And- And it is pretty funny because our differences can be quite vast if you ever have interacted with the two of us separate and then together. And so it's kind of funny how these two people who don't exactly have a whole lot in common really do get together and uh, we kind of look after each other and other members of our family. I, I think everybody in my family is pretty much on the close side with the exception of one or two members for whatever reason. Yeah, I think I think I've seen I think most of the time I have seen you Chrissy was also there. So like, it's interesting to see. It's cool that we got this time one on one. So yeah, to kind of see the I can kind of see some of the differences, but then I can see some of the same things too i think you're i was gonna say you're both like awesomely quirky (laughs) uh yes we both can be uh sometimes i'm a little bit more so and when i am we kind of shrug our shoulders and say well it must be the asperger's at kicking in (laughs) which we're gonna get a little bit into that a little bit later we can delve more into that um some things that we were messaging each other back and forth through email. You mentioned that you like to play video games. I personally love to play some video games myself. What are some of your favorites or some that you currently play? So one of my favorites that I currently play is Warframe. And that's a lot like Destiny, if you've ever played Destiny, but there's some very big differences. Destiny is a first-person shooter, where Warframe is a third-person over-the-shoulder shooter, and there's a reason for that, and it's because it's very fast-paced. 
Um, it doesn't focus on player versus player so much as it focuses on player cooperation with each other. Um, and what I really enjoy about the game is that the community is kind of, um, they're, they're very active in the game's development. The game is always under development. The developers are always working on something new. What you might find interesting is one of the newer Warframes that they've introduced is actually called Zaku and was a player um, built Warframe. Not this Zaku. This is a different Zaku we'll get to later. <laughs> I, um, I've heard of, I want to say I've only, Warframe kind of sounds familiar. I've definitely heard of Destiny. I heard it's really hard to play. I never really personally played myself. Is that like, what do you agree? It's like a challenging game. Destiny is a lot harder to play if you're playing by yourself, whereas Warframe, you can play with random people, you can play with people you know, or you can play by yourself. The game will team you up with other people searching to do the same mission as you, and you don't have to talk to them at all. You don't, and you'll still get the rewards and whatever you're looking for. The only few downsides is it is a farming game, so you're going to be running the same mission seven or eight times to get gotcha. that thing that you want. But for me, because of the way that my job is, I don't have time to invest in a story-heavy game. So a farming game like Warframe suits my needs, where it's nice to relax, pick off some bad guys to blow off steam without any real life consequence. <laughs> and, you know, maybe at the end of the day, get that thing that I wanted. Okay. See, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite in a way. I kind of, I kind of like the, well, I mean, I like both different types, the farming and the story, but I, I know personally in my life, it felt like the farming ones, I would almost get too and i would i would get overly invested in those ones and i'd be like holy crap where did five hours go whereas like the story one i'd maybe finish which i guess i could see that with the story ones too you could really lose a lot of time but i guess for me i go much slower with story ones because there'll be like a part you finish it and, I, and for me i'll usually take a break where i know some people could just play that 24 <laughs> hours what's nice about warframe is when you do start it doesn't seem like it has a story but there is actually a story and i don't want to give away spoilers for anybody who wants to play yeah. but my personal favorite quest is called the second dream and that is one where you get a really big surprise and i really enjoy how de the developer did it and i just i really recommend checking it out especially if you enjoy destiny I find Warframe to be a bit better. You can do a lot more customization. There's like 50 different frames to choose from, more or less, each one with its own theme and set of abilities. So I definitely recommend checking it out. The best part is it's free to play. You don't have to pay for anything if you don't want to. And she's not sponsored, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I just, I love the, I just really enjoy the whole. I don't have to pay for anything if I don't want to. <laughs> Destiny, you kind of do. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. A lot of, I mean, a lot of games are starting to go that way now where there's like loot boxes or just certain things where they really, almost like a, yeah, pay to play. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of those myself. I've had a couple cell phone games that got me into some trouble financially. <laughs> Yes, I, I think a lot of gamers are starting to get kind of fed up with it. I've re listened and watched many uh, YouTubers talking about it, and they make some pretty good points that I can agree with, where I, too, am a little bit annoyed with unfinished games or games that you have to buy DLC to get the full uh, experience. Yeah, I mean, here's well, here's a question I can add with that because i noticed yeah a lot of games they get released and then they start coming out with yeah like dcl uh wait did i say that right dc <laughs> download DLC. dlc dc yes. <laughs> i knew that that sounded off dlc content um do you think that yeah people because i debate between like are companies just rushing this because they just want to keep making new stuff or is it people like the consumers pushing these companies to come out with stuff quick i think it's a little bit both i think 
companies make promises to people, people get very high expectations. And when those expectations aren't met, the consumer gets annoyed. But I do think that some companies are only in it for the money. You get some games that are only developed for maybe three or four years. They put it on the shelf, people buy it, and it's not that great of a game, or it's exactly like the game be the year before, but maybe with some added features. I think it, it goes a little bit both ways. I think some of it is the depends on the developer. Um, the bigger developers I've seen have pretty big fiascos. I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> um, but some of them... They, they either make promises they can't keep or they're just trying to push out a product that they, they want you to buy it. So they might tell you one thing and it might somewhat be true, but it's not really true. And I'd, I'd like it better if we could kind of go back to the good old days where it was more creativity. We're making this game. We want to tell you a story rather than just take our money and here's your product. I Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Um, you also told me that you build, is it the name? Is it Gundam? Gundam. Uh, Gundam. So, so Gundam you made... is, Gundam is a series, uh, that aired back in the eighties. It didn't do very well. However, where, it, where it did sell was in the market, the model building market. Um, and it became known as Gunpla. Gundam models or Gunpla isn't just exclusively to Gundam. Back here, I have a couple of ones that I've built. Which are this, awesome. This one here actually isn't a Gundam at all. This is a Zoids model. Um, but it's the same concept of you have your plastic runners. I have a bunch of empty ones here I haven't gotten rid of yet. Where the parts come on and they're labeled... Okay. This is Q2, and then they usually have a corresponding number, and so you'll cut the piece out and attach it to another piece, and by the end, you get something beautiful like these. Yeah, I mean, those are those look awesome. How long, on average, do they take to build? Uh, when I first started, I wasn't putting in a whole bunch of effort, so they could take me about an hour, but now they can take me a few days. Because I've gotten into doing parts that might be coming out, might be hard to see, but if you look in like the leg there, the black lining where that yeah. white is, that's what's called, that's what we call panel lining. And that's when you're taking a marker or some really thinned out paint and you're having it fill in that line, that seam line to make it pop more, to make it look more realistic. Hmm. And so that can take me a little while, too. That can take me a few hours to a few days. And you can kind of tell the difference. Uh, this one, I didn't pan a line at all. So you can see that he. this is all just the detail that it came with with some stickers thrown on. But there's no, nothing actually popping out at you. Yeah, I mean, those are still really cool. When did I? I don't even remember if I asked. When, when did you start? I started maybe about three or four years ago. A friend of mine, we both are have this as a common hobby. Um, before we were buying them on the internet, either off Amazon or we were going to Barnes and Nobles where they sell a couple. Really just any store we could find that had them, but the majority of them did not have a very good selection. The best place to buy them was Amazon. However, the past two years we found that there's a store out in westfield that sells pretty much just these these model kits and it's called the gundam galaxy and that's probably one of our favorite places to go um the people there are excellent uh very nice if they don't have something in stock they'll order it for you if you ask nicely um and if you go there you might find a four-legged helper wandering around the store and who doesn't love that seriously as a my dog is my baby i'm unfortunately allergic to cats otherwise i probably would have had a cat or cats and dogs and drafts at this point <laughs> but, yeah i know what you mean i i say that i love all animals but there are some that i prefer to love from a distance yeah. mostly things like bears bears can i like to love from a distance true i guess i my favorite animal i would say are definitely tigers 
Um, and I would love to own one, but I just know I, I wouldn't be capable of doing Yeah, it. better to love it from a distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people don't. <laughs> uh, but I, I feel that in itself is kind of foolish. Um, the, these animals... They, they're meant to be wild. They're not oh, meant to be domesticated. And, yeah. you know, it's issues like that that I actually try to, they're causes that I try to get involved in from time to time when I'm able to. Um, I view zoos as a necessary evil. I don't necessarily like that animals have to be in zoos, but reputable zoos like um, the Bronx Zoo, for example, the really big ones, they are doing breeding programs to try to help these animals hold on for as long as they can. So those are zoos that I would go visit and give your patronage to rather than a small one that really doesn't care. Yeah, I, I'm i so happy you mentioned that. I hate zoos personally. Um, and I think I want to say it was the big E for people that are familiar with that one. Um, you kind of have to be more local maybe. But um, I, when I would see the animals there, that's when I really started to get kind of mad at those types of establishments. But I've also been to the Bronx Zoo, and that was a nice zoo. I didn't know they did the breeding programs. Usually big zoos like that will. Yeah. Um, as far as the big E goes, because I did work with working horses, and thus I do advocate for working animals, yeah. it's a little bit of a difficult thing because you have – a working animal who's performing a service and helping to care for itself because the money goes back into helping care for it. But then you have some people that don't care for the animal. A good person, they take the money that they make with that animal and put back into taking care of it because that is not only their partner, it's their livelihood. But then you have others who don't see it that way. It's a tool, and once the tool is broken and used up, they get rid of it. And those are people I don't like. Yeah, that was that was really well said. What are what are some organ? Because you mentioned that you um, were fond of certain like animal organizations. Which ones do you support? Currently, right now, there is not one. I can only tell you one that I would not support. Based okay. off of the research that I've done myself, and that is PETA. I would not support PETA because of the research that I've done. They tend to do more harm than good. They are animal rights activists, and animal rights is different than animal welfare. Animals, because they're not intelligent like people are, cannot voice their wants and needs. Typically, they are not seen with rights. They are property which is somewhat understandable, they can't speak like people can. Yeah. But what they have a right to versus their well-being sometimes conflicts with one another. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I personally haven't done a whole ton of research into PETA. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I also don't know. I don't know, like, the nitty-gritty about them, but I have what I have experienced with them were some very vocal, aggressive individuals <laughs> pushing the animal rights. And I think it's interesting that you um, were talking about the distinction between animal rights and animal welfare. I don't think enough people think of that. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, you know how right now the time of season it's cold out and everybody says, if they're cold, you're cold, but they're not taking into consideration certain breeds such as huskies which absolutely love this kind of weather to them this is a spring day so what yeah. their right is of they should be inside where they'll be warm and comfortable is conflicting with their welfare of it's too hot in the house they don't find that comfortable let them play in the snow all day until night comes they'll probably be nice and tired and happy to come in for you yeah. But at the same time, don't put a chihuahua outside in this weather because it will freeze oh. to death. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I want to get into. So I just to let the audience know, because obviously they didn't see our conversations outside of this interview or outside of this episode. I did. Um, if this was something or I'd asked you if we could talk about a certain thing more in depth. And you said that it was OK, just because I don't want people to be like, wow, why did you go into um, 
something Carly was diagnosed with or something. I'm not trying to make this like that. It's just something that I um, figured would maybe be a really good discussion for people who are on the spectrum that might be listening to the show. Um, have you heard of a show called Lo um, Love on the Spectrum on Netflix? No, I don't have a Netflix account. So okay. I, I don't watch Netflix. Okay. It's, um, we can maybe get a little bit into that. Maybe not, but it's long story short, it's a show about people who are on the spectrum looking for love and stuff. Um, and I'd recently just watched that and it was, re it was really good. It wasn't like, uh, um, you know, just like typical reality shows are obviously not like reality. They're very played up and dramatic and meant to be dramatic for people. Whereas this, for the most part, seemed like a true representation in a way. Um, but yeah, so anyway, let's get into um, the next question. So like you kind of said earlier at the beginning of the episode that you were diagnosed with Asperger's. Um, could you tell us more about that your journey with that i was diagnosed i think i was in seventh grade at the time and things were very hard throughout my school career um because we went to high school together you probably remember i was kind of a lonely kid i did not have a lot of friends a lot of people i could not relate to and did not relate to um some of it i look back on and realize a little bit of it was me, but I think some of it was other people unwilling to see things from my point of view. I always found myself a little bit out of place among my peers. Now that I'm older and I'm out of high school, I feel more that I found where I belong in that I get along with everybody at my job all of them vary in age. The majority are older than me. Maybe it's because I've always been a little bit of an older soul. So I get along with adults more than I get along with people my own age. But that that's just how it was. Um, high school and middle school, school sucked. It was rough, but I'm happy that I finally made it through. So for anybody out there that's struggling, just know that it seems like forever but once you get out it really doesn't seem like forever at all just hang in there keep going you will find your place yeah i mean that's well said i i know for me too i didn't have the best high school experience it's i mean high school like you just said high school sucks <laughs> in general um obviously we all have different struggles going through school but um but at the same time, what you had to go through, I just think, especially when we were in high school compared to maybe like 2020 and on, I just think people weren't educated enough in autism or Asperger's. And I think I don't, I'm assuming they just kind of judged you before they really got to know you, at least some people. Some did. Um, luckily, my cousin, I had a cousin who looked out for me. So a lot of kids left me alone for fear of incurring her uh, anger, maybe yeah. is a good word. Um, but, you know, even that was a little bit lonely, too, because, no, I wasn't always getting picked on, but now I have nobody to talk to. And that that kind of sucked, too. That does suck. It sucks to be. I mean, no one really wants to be alone or anything. So, I mean, yeah. That's not fun. What are um, what are some myths about people who have Asperger's or are on the autism spectrum? So I think one of the biggest myths that drive me absolutely bonkers, forgive me if it's too controversial, is the vaccines causing autism. Uh -oh. And I want to point out just this little tidbit. My sister and I have both been vaccinated for everything. And I'm the only one with autism. So I want to say that's kind of proof right there that autism, you're either born with it or you're not. There's nothing wrong with having autism. I'm perfectly capable of functioning in a normal society. Like I said, other than the fact that I still live at home, I work a normal job. I work normal hours. I can drive. I can pretty much take care of myself. 
financially, you know, times are hard. So I still live at home to save on the cost of living. But if anybody's afraid of, you know, their child having autism or whatever, just support them however they need it, you know, try to view things from their point of view, try to ask them, why do you feel this way? Explain to me because I want to understand. I think after my own mother started kind of coming around and trying to understand things from my point of view, she actually, her and I started to have a lot better relationship. She did push me and she would push me hard, but I've come to appreciate that she did that. You know, she helped me move forward and become a productive member of society. So don't be afraid to push your children, but also realize when your pushing is starting to become a hindrance, you know, ask them, okay, how can we get through this together? Let's compromise. Let's work on this together. And then, and I think sometimes too, then some parents are almost like too overprotective um, to where, yeah, then that's hindering the child as well from being able to experience things. Um, and, and to that, I say, let them fail. Be there to help them pick up the pieces. You don't have to fix everything. And no parent wants to see their children fail, but every now and then they have to fall in order to realize that they have to get back up again. I've had times where my mother had to let me fall before I realized, oh, I have to do this thing. I have to get this done. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely some of the things you were saying. It definitely is some big misconceptions that um, people who have autism, like they can't, yeah, they can't do daily things or they can't um, find love. Like that's just it. Or like you said, with the whole thing living at home, there's many people living at home still. This is a horrible time, especially now. But even before the pandemic, it's like it's I think it's an individual thing. It's not just because you have Asperger's or autism or anything like that. And there's nothing wrong with living at home. Like I no. said, the three of us work together. Yeah. It's a little hard because my mother is not in good health, but the three of us, we all try to find ways to work together and to contribute. And I know a lot of people, they don't have the best relationship with their family, but I just want to say try to, because at the end of the day, family is the people that have your back no matter what. I may have been alone in high school, but I always had my family to back me up. And that to me is very important. And that that is kind of what blows my mind when people say, oh, I don't have a good relationship with my family. It's so foreign to me. So no matter how you feel about a person in your family, just try, you know, because at the end of the day, who who's going to be there to pick you up when you fall down? And that, yeah, that's a good point. I That's probably something I need to hear um, personally, but that's a whole nother <laughs> topic. Um, so yeah, you didn't really, I when I mentioned, um, usually I have people share social media links and stuff. I know you kind of were like, didn't really care about sharing those necessarily, but you wanted to give a shout out to a certain I place, right? I wanted to give a shout out to the Gundam Galaxy. If anybody's interested in trying to build these amazing models, I would definitely give the place a visit. You can contact them on Facebook on their page. Um, they will answer your questions pretty promptly. They have a vast assortment of kits. And there's a community that they have um, uh, called Gun Gunpla Builders New England. Everybody on there is great, and all of them are always more than willing to help with any questions or concerns. I, I highly recommend this hobby. If you're not a patient person, maybe not for you, but I find it a very relaxing and very fun hobby to do. So do check them out. And like I said earlier, you might get visited by a four-legged helper. And, sorry, one more time. What was the name of the place? The Gundam Galaxy. Okay, I'll put um, their links, I'll put in the description of the episode. Yes, I, I'm sure you'll find them pretty easy. Okay, I hope. 
they'll have uh, this guy as their um, their uh, profile picture. Okay, perfect. All right, well, thank you so much. All right, so now we are going to move on to the next segment, which is Frankly Speaking. So there's two stories that I decided I'm going to talk about, give my kind of insight opinion on them. Sorry that they might seem a little bit older news by the time this episode releases. I'm recording probably a week or two earlier than this is released. So sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so the first story has to do with Lori Laughlin. So if you don't know who that is, she played Aunt Becky on the show. I think it's sort of Nickelodeon or ABC Family. Maybe it was Nickelodeon. But um, she played Aunt Becky on the show Full House. And she was a little bit on Full House. And then something started happening. If you're not familiar, she was part of this really big college scam with Desperate Housewives actress as well, um, Felicity Huffman. There was a bunch of other parents as well. It was a big group in California of parents that were bribing admission staff into getting their kids into these really prestigious schools without doing, without getting the good grades, without doing the hard work. So I definitely, when this first had occurred, I had much stronger feelings about everything, especially I also was a student myself. And one thing that I want to get across is that it's very frustrating when, you know, I'm someone that I never really grew up with a lot of money or anything like that. So it's really frustrating when you're busting your ass trying to be the best student that you can be. And then you have someone right next to you, Joe Schmo, that's like, here's $500,000. And that person beats someone like you out from that last spot, maybe at that prestigious school or whatever. So that I can understand the frustration that a lot of people had about this. Some people might think, what's the big deal? There is a big deal because there's already so many inequalities in this world. And this is just another one due to financial backgrounds and all that stuff. So, so yeah, Lori Loughman and Felicity Huffman, they were both arrest. They were both arrested. They both pled guilty. Felicity, it was like what a fucking joke. I'm I'm supposed to focus on Lori, but I say it's a joke because I want to say she was supposed she was sentenced to 14 days, 14 fucking days in prison, and I think she only served 11. It's just insane. Lori Loughman only served two months, which is just fucking nothing considering how many years people have been sentenced to jail for having marijuana on them, which is now legal in some states, including my own. And I just find it very ironic that now that it is legal, it's not like those people are being released from prison. They're still paying for that crime for something that's legal, whereas something that Lori Loff did was very illegal to bribe admission staff. And I think what makes it even more slimy and grimy with this whole situation, this is something I didn't know about before, was that they were trying to pass the bribes off as these charity donations, which is just fucked up. You know, I didn't even know they were doing that too. And so they were trying to pass that off. And so with Lori specifically, it was to get her two daughters into this rowing team. I watched some YouTube video about a YouTuber talking about the rowing team and how much work it is to get onto that. So now I personally understand a little bit more on how early you have to wake up just to go do that and how much hard work that that is and the good grades that are required to be part of that team. It's very, you know, good for all that stuff. And to just have these girls who never even rowed in their entire lives to take the spot from some from other girls or other students who really and truly deserved this spot. It's very insulting. It's a spit to the fucking face, pretty much. So that's how I took it, at least. And that's how some other people took it. And yeah, so she was just released like I said, by the time this episode releases, I want to say it's going to be a week or two later, but she was released yesterday, and it's just two months is just not enough. It's, you know, you start to question, is it because she's a celebrity? Is it because of um, her finances? Is it because of certain privileges? Is it all of the above? And I mean, I think it's definitely all of the above, and she definitely should have been in long in jail longer. Um, her her husband, I want to say, is in for five months, but they're talking about him getting out really soon. And it's just very unfortunate that 
we are like, I already knew we're already part of this broken system, but to really see just how many different ways our system is broken is just appalling with the shit that people get the really horrible shit that people are getting away with. And I think it's definitely easier to sympathize besides being a student yourself in these types of situations, but to be the parent of a hardworking student where your household income isn't really, you know, high class, you're, you might not even be middle class. It's very frustrating to, you're trying to give your kid everything that they want in this world, including a decent good education and then you can't because assholes like this are fucking around with the system it's just not right that's my opinion on that there was a very interesting quote that Lori did say that i want to say get across on here she said that her actions helped exacerbate existing inequalities in society and she's right i mean her apologies and her daughter's apologies, they seemed somewhat genuine. They seemed somewhat remorseful. So I guess I could give them that. I hope that's true and that it's not some act, but it is true. I mean, the, it's it's providing a huge inequality. And yeah, it's just it just shows how, once again, it shows how greedy our society is, unfortunately. The other story that I want to quickly get into, it has to do with the singer Halsey. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of hers. I've barely listened to her music. I kind of know maybe some of the hits on the radio that for people that still listen to the radio, I guess I should say the hits on my Spotify profile, but Halsey, yeah, Halsey is a singer. She's somewhat new. I feel like she's only been around for a few years or so compared to, you know, when you think about other artists who have been around for 10 years plus. But Halsey, supposedly, she posted, I found this article interesting because of my own personal experiences. She apparently posted some photo of herself. Um, a fan had asked her to post a picture at her worst, and she posted a picture of herself while she was going through an eating disorder. And I figured, well, I'm someone that can really judge that because I've experienced an eating disorder. I've only said it a few times on the podcast, probably more. I have a whole episode at least dedicated to it. So I kind of just wanted to weigh in quickly on my thoughts for that. Um, I guess the I guess what was going on was that people were mad that she didn't give a, su a sufficient trigger warning. Uh, and I mean... With that, I, I'm not really like, I'm not really hating on Halsey personally for that. I don't think, I don't know. I, I don't think, you know, I just, I think I'm trying to think back to when I was really experiencing an eating disorder and I have close friends who did as well. And I, you know, when it came to certain pictures like that, we would call it fitspos or fitspirations on Tumblr and other social medias like that. But Tumblr was a really big one. I want to say Instagram as well, where, you know, we, when we would look for picture, like we were purposely looking for those types of pictures that Halsey had posted about. So I don't really, in my opinion, I don't think a trigger warning or a sufficient trigger warning was really going to make much of a difference because so many people that are suffering from an eating disorder, whether it's anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa or binge eating disorder, no matter what it is, we were actively looking for those types of things to, quote, inspire us and obviously not inspire us in a good way. So yeah, my my thoughts on that is it's like, I just I don't see why so many news outlets were writing about this and I don't really see the big deal in my opinion coming from someone who has suffered from eating disorders. I don't really see what she necessarily did wrong. I think it's a little bit nitpicking and I think the real question with all of it is why are fans asking her to post the worst pictures of herself? Like we should be trying to uplift each other a little bit more. So that was a little bit confusing to me. I'm like I think the real problem was the question that the fan asked her on Instagram, but Halsey apologized for her actions. You kind of I guess as a celebrity, you almost, I feel like you almost have to apologize for anything you do. Like, I'm sorry I breathed today. I'm sorry I ate that cookie without permission. Like, I feel like they have to apologize for 
obvious i mean obviously there are certain things people that celebrities will do that are fucked up and that they should apologize for it's ironic because a lot of those people don't but the little things um you know, even the little things celebrities have to apologize for because they're on such a bigger platform. And it's just kind of dumb, in my opinion, with that. I just, yeah, to me, it's not the biggest deal, personally. But that is the end of this week's episode. I want to thank Carly so much for being a guest on today's episode. I want to thank John Moon for doing the music the intro and outro music for season three i want to thank my producer monica lee and if you yourself who's listening or watching if you would like to become a producer or executive producer yourselves on the show all you have to do is go to my patreon link and you could sign up on one of the tiers also make sure you buy some merch <laughs> i updated some merch i might have new merch by the time this comes out Ooh. <laughs> i do want to thank each and every one of you guys for listening and watching and supporting it means so much it's what keeps me going you know i'm just gonna add to i once in a while i'll doubt myself whether it's the podcast or just myself in general and i know people can relate to that especially during this year <laughs> well by the time this post will be 2021 but you know this year especially has just 2020 itself has been so tough and i doubt it's gonna get much easier during 2021 let's just hope for better let's pray for better but i just you know i've doubted myself along the way certain days i've had better days than others pretty much is what i'm trying to say so i really do thank you guys for saying you love the show or for buying the merch or for becoming a patron or just any type of support i appreciate so much and i can't thank you guys enough for that i really can't and i just hope to continue offering you guys this show and i want to just keep elevating it more and more so all right guys i hope you guys have a super special awesome day and bye